I know it's five years at $45 million per year, but Giannis is staying in Milwaukee? Got that to talk about. Plus, James Harden, Houston Rockets, turmoil in H-Town. How much is James Harden to blame? And, of course, the Browns might very well be the biggest threat to the Kansas City Chiefs. That's right. I said it. All that and more coming up. First takes in the house. Let's go. Giannis Antetokounmpo agreed to a super max extension in Milwaukee. His agent telling Woj it'll be the full five-year, $228 million super max. This is my home. This is my city. Steal by Giannis. He's got a bust out. Here he goes. Slam dunk. They secured one of the biggest assets in the NBA. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Bam. Freaks call this guy a freak. This is no mere mortal man we're looking at. The Greek basketball god. The show goes on and uh, let's get it. Oh, Giannis, he's rich, rich, y'all, and no one is more deserving. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to First Take. Thank you so much for being with us. Stephen A. Smith, Max Kellerman, um, Molly Karam Rose. We got a whole lot to debate today, so let's get it, everybody. The MVP signing the largest contract in NBA history, five years, $228 million. Here's Giannis with his thoughts. This is my home. This is my city. I'm um, excited to be a part of this organization. I'm excited to uh, go to work with my teammate. I'm excited to walk around uh, this city. And uh, it's been amazing, man. It's been amazing. And uh, this, this show goes on, and uh, let's get it. I couldn't be happier for him. All right, Packers quarterback Bucks limited partner Aaron Rodgers saying the following on the Pat McAfee show. It's a big signing for us. We're pretty ecstatic. Hopefully, we can keep rolling. Max, you're up first. Tell me, what does this deal mean for the NBA? Well, before I... Congratulations to Giannis for signing an almost quarter billion dollar contract. Well deserved. And, of course, you always respect guys like Giannis or Damian Lillard who say, I'm not ring chasing and leaving. I'm going to try to win right here, even if it's a small or undesirable market, meaning not a major cosmopolitan area, not a warm weather place, not a tax-free state, stuff like that. Of course, you respect it. What this means, though, what the, the real implications of this, it's good for the Lakers, that was a good day for the Lakers. This morning is a good morning for the Los Angeles Lakers because Giannis was a balance of power player. Look, when KD left Oklahoma City, did anyone have a chance to beat the Warriors? He went to a place and tipped the balance of power, right? That was a bad day for the best team in the league that year for the Cleveland Cavs. When KD went to Golden State, bad day for the Cavs. And LeBron, right? LeBron's team's usually the best team because he's the best player. When that happened, LeBron really didn't have a shot at a title, and Stephen A would point it out heading into those series based on what LeBron was saying, like, KD's over there. What can we do? When Giannis stays put, though, the Milwaukee Bucks are unlikely to be much better. They're not a desirable location where major free agents are going to sign. They made a Drew Holiday move. That was nice. The Bogdanovich deal fell apart. Miritich left for Europe, right, last year. They didn't re-sign Brogdon. They probably still don't have enough. And will they ever get enough? That remains to be seen, but I, I wouldn't bet on it. So who is today good for? Today favors the status quo. Who's already, whoever's already the best team has one less thing to worry about, and that's LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers. Well, the question was, who's the deal good for? The question was whether or not what does the deal mean for the NBA? And I'm going to tell you what it means for the NBA. It means that the that's Miami I mean. Heat are going to be what they are, a very, very good team that's going to challenge for supremacy within the Eastern Conference. But that's about 
all. That's what it means, primarily to, to, to some degree anyway, uh, due to what you said, Max, in terms of it being a balance of power move, because obviously if Giannis ended up on, on Miami, that would definitely have tipped the scales. If he had ended up someplace else, it could have tipped, tipped the scales for a respective other team. But I just think about Miami, and that's the first thought that came to my mind, because we all knew that they were trying to clear cap space. They were ensuring that they cleared cap space to make sure they had room in 2021 to go after him, if indeed that was the case. Him and Bam Adebayo have the same agent. We know that Bam Adebayo got a $163 million extension, but that still wasn't going to prevent the Miami Heat from going after Giannis. If Giannis definitely said it was something that he was willing to consider. The fact that we saw what Miami was able to do. We saw Jimmy Butler. We saw the ascension of Tyler Hero. We saw Duncan Robinson uh, display himself as the specialist sniper that he is. We saw all of these different parts, okay? You saw Goran Dragic go down and imagine what they would be if he were healthy. You saw Kendrick Nunn and what he's capable of doing. You look at the Miami Heat, even though that's the same team that beat the Milwaukee Bucks in the postseason in five games. Remember, Milwaukee didn't have Drew Holiday. And in Miami's case, they lucky Milwaukee didn't get Bogdanovich because somebody within the Bucks organization foolishly opened their mouths prematurely and put that all out there, which ultimately nicks the deal. In the end, what it comes down to is that we looked at Miami and we said, excuse me, this team has arrived. And now that they're players in the Giannis sweepstakes, well, imagine if they get him. We're talking about back to the days of when LeBron and D-Wade were going to the finals four straight years because if Giannis was in Miami, there's no way in hell we would have picked another team to knock off the Miami Heat. Now that that's not the case, then ultimately we have to look at what we're seeing here. Milwaukee is a contender, arguably a favorite. The Philadelphia 76ers can't be ignored. Neither can Miami, neither can Boston. But in the end, the Eastern Conference itself is a crapshoot with those top five teams with someone or the other, maybe Milwaukee or Miami playing a little bit of favorite. But outside of that, that's all you're getting here. And uh, uh, because of that, Miami to me is what jumps out, Max. So they're more hurt than anybody. Well, I, I think that's right, because, but mainly what you're saying is because Giannis was linked to Miami. But Giannis didn't have to go to Miami yeah. to make that to be the balance of power. He could have gone to a half dozen teams at least, and we would have picked those teams, maybe even against the Lakers, right? That's my point. If KD would have stayed in Oklahoma City, that would have been great for LeBron in Cleveland, right? But he went to the Thunder, and it was a wrap. If Kawhi would have signed with the Lakers, why even play the season, right? As it turns out, the Lakers won anyway. Could you imagine what they would have done with Kawhi also on that team? The, when, when a superstar stays put, it's good for competitive balance in one sense for more teams but whoever is the top dog rests a little easier and and to this morning when I thought who is this best for you say well the Bucks uh, they it, if they didn't trade him this year anyway it, the Bucks are the same that they would have been I didn't even ask if who they was had the best gotten for. Bogdanovich Stephen A you, even if they had got Bogdanovich but what does it mean for the NBA it means the Lakers are still on top. That's what it means. And they will be on top for the foreseeable future. That's what this means. Wait, wait a minute. Wait Even a minute. Even if they no, had gotten no, Bogdanovich, no, Stephen A., no, and they it had doesn't. Drew Holiday no, it and doesn't. Bogdanovich, would you have picked them to beat the Lakers? No. No, no, no. The point that I'm trying to make to you, Max, is that he was never going to Miami this season. So the point is him staying in Milwaukee. When you talk about the Lakers, yeah, for the foreseeable future, your point is right. But there was nothing that was, go <clears throat> excuse me, that was going to derail the Lakers from being the favorites this season. The fact is, is that when we look at it from the Giannis standpoint in terms of what it means for the NBA, we were fantasizing about the potential of him being in Miami. That is the catastrophic impact his decision to stay in Milwaukee has had. The fact that Miami is no longer... We were looking forward to South Beach. Remember that? Remember when I was talking about going back to South Beach? Remember when Molly, when I was talking about doing interviews from Biscayne Bay, leaning on yachts while I'm talking mm. to the Michael K show? You understand? I have my I reservations at the Mandarin Oriental off of Biscayne. You understand what I'm saying? I, all I'm saying, really, Molly? Really, you going to say that with a straight face? You going to say that with a straight face, Molly? <laughs> I see. Is that what you just said, Molly? Stop it. Stop it. Okay? <laughs> bottom line is, bottom line is we, can't, we can't look forward to that anymore. He can't look forward to that anymore. Oh, my so, God. So definitely to me. I miss vacation. Because you I know where I was so planning on being. You Molly, know where I was planning on being. I miss Miami. Being. Stephen A. Smith. I miss all of it. Molly, Stephen A. Mm -hmm. Smith accused me of not answering the question. When, in fact, we're reinterpreting the question you. to suit my purposes. That's not what happened. What happened is Stephen A. Smith 
heard this question and he didn't see what the deal means for the NBA. He said what the deal means for Stephen A. Smith. All he could think about was he can't spend more time in Miami. Stephen A., that's what this comes down to. The question is what does it mean for the NBA? I can explain. I can explain. I can explain. This should be called your own agenda, not first take. Hey, listen, listen. I did answer the question. I did mean what I said. But it doesn't mean Max did not just make a very valid point because I'll be damned if I wasn't thinking about myself too. Yeah, as, I mean, don't get me wrong. I meant no what question. I said in terms of my basketball analysis and I was telling the truth. But right. the back end of it, yeah, I'm absolutely renaming right. the I'm show. thinking about that too. Yeah. I'm renaming the show today. Miami, it's not LA, first Miami, take. LA, it's, like it's first agenda. And there's somebody else who has first agenda on their mind and that would be one James Harden and that's where